okay so our next topic is the poyasi family as you know we are studying the angiospermic plant family and really the first time we are going to see the monocotyledonous plant family okay so this particular family is of monocotyledon family and this particular family is having the many grasses okay whatever the grasses are there all these grasses are belong to this particular poyasi family and this family were also called as the gramine family okay so uh, just like the other plant families we are going to consider its vegetative characters then the reproductive characters then uh, how the floral formula is there how we can draw the floral diagram for the poyasi family and then what are the economic importance for this particular poyasi family all these things we are going to study in this particular video lecture okay so this is your syllabus we are dealing with the paper 1 and the chapter number 3 that is the phanerogams under which you have to study the gymnosperms as well as angiosperms and we are here at the study of angiospermic plant families that is the poyasi family okay now consider see the distribution of the poyasi family see the family is commonly called as the grass family because whatever the grasses are there these grasses are belongs to this particular poyasi family and hence this poyasi family have the other name which is called as the grass family it is one of the largest families of the angiospermic uh, families okay whatever the angiospermic families are there among these angiospermic families one of the largest families okay although not the largest one but one of the largest one family is the poyasi family that is there were the many uh, species which belongs to this particular poyasi family okay now see it is consist of the 620 genera and almost 6000 species are there and hence we say the large number of species are there and that is why the poyasi is considered as a large family the members of this family are cosmopolitan in distribution that literally means they were found worldwide okay anywhere you go in any country you will definitely find there is a presence of the members of the poyasi family and hence when when we talk about the distribution of the poyasi family their distribution is cosmopolitan in nature that literally means they were found every everywhere and not only that see the plants are represented in all three ecological types that is the hydrophytes xerophytes as well as the mesophyte as you know the when you say the hydrophyte the uh, we are dealing with the plants which are lived inside the water that is the aquatic plant and then when we say the xerophytic condition we say the plants which are living where there is a scarcity of water okay and when we say the mesophytes there is a neither a too much of water or nor the too low water okay too much water which means the aquatic condition is there low water which means the xerophytic condition is there but the members of the poyasi family are found in in all the three ecological types that is they were represented in the aquatic habitat as a uh, hydrophytes then they were represented as the xerophytes that is the plants which live in a scarcity of water and they were also found in the mesophytic conditions okay and here's uh, this uh, justify why the poyasi members are cosmopolitan in presence they were found everywhere they like the aquatic habitat they like the xerophytic habitat they like the mesophytic habitat and they show the remarkable adaptability towards the all ecological types of the habitat and hence they were found throughout the world that is they were cosmopolitan in distribution okay while in india nearly 850 species of this particular poyasi family found okay so distribution wise when you talk about the poyasi family it is famously called the grass family it's a large family right it's more, more than 6000 species are there and they were cosmopolitan in distribution and found everywhere in nearly every possible habitat for example hydrophytes xerophytes mesophytes etc okay and 850 species were represented from the india then let's consider its vegetative characters okay how the habit is there see herbs are there then the annual or the perennial or the shrubs are there okay and sometimes tree like uh, appearance is also there so as you know the presence of herb is considered as the advanced characteristic okay so herb types of the plants belongs to this poyasi family then the shrubs are also belongs to the poyasi family and some are showing the tree like habit okay for example bambusa consider this is the bambusa species and they were showing the tree like habitat okay for example see the dendrocalamus this is the dendrocalamus it looks like a tree okay although it's a grass only okay uh, the bamboo itself is considered as a grass because it is nothing but the modified long length grass okay but uh, the they were looks like a small uh, big tree okay and that is why the tree like habit is also there in the poyasi family so herbs are there shrubs are there and tree like plants are also there in this particular uh, poyasi family see the roots how the roots are there see the adventitious roots are there okay see the very first time we are dealing with the adventitious root because as you know the very basic difference between the monocotyledons and the dicotyledons is that the dicotyledons were showing the tap root system in the dicotyledon there in the tap root system there is the main root and then there are the lateral roots okay this type of the tap root system is found throughout the dicotyledons but when you talk about the monocotyledons as you know poyasi is the family of a monocotyledonous plants in the monocot 
cotyledonous the plants there is a advantageous type of the uh, root system okay consider this is the soil level and above here we have the plant and below we have the root system like this okay that is many roots are coming out from the common point and they were parallelly growing with each other okay so such a kind of fibrous root system uh, is called as the advantageous type of the root system there is no main root okay there is a in the advantageous root system you will no not find any main root and all the roots are looks like the bunch of the roots okay there is a no peculiar uh, one root and then the lateral branches just like in the tap root okay what uh, what we see in the tap root there is a main root first okay the main root is there and then there is a lateral branches but this is not the case in the advantageous roots okay in the advantageous root you will just find the bunch of the roots which is called as the fibrous root okay or the advantageous root so this type of roots whenever you try to take the grass okay if you take out the grass from the ground you will definitely find this type of the roots and this type of the roots are famously called as the advantageous root or fibrous type of the roots okay they are extensively branched and they are facelled or having the still type okay for example in the zms see observe this is a zms root okay uh, and uh, you clearly observe how the roots are present outside of the soil right and they were providing the mechanical support to the plant when there is a wind condition okay whenever there is a fast wind these uh, delicate plants uh, hold themselves to the ground by using these uh, steel root okay so whatever the steel root are there in the uh, zms these are the special uh, adaptations uh, possessed by these uh, plants which belongs to the poaceae family and they were showing the roots above the ground and they were helpful in maintaining the plant in a erect posture even though there is a hard wind uh, hard wind okay so here you will definitely find uh, the advantageous type of root system why because it's a monocotyledonous family the roots are branched and they, uh, there are the steel root presence in the uh, plant family okay that is the cms okay so uh, when we consider the vegetative character first you should start from the habit and then you should go for the root and after that uh, we should uh, go for the stem okay now see how the stem is there see the underground rhizome in all the perennial grasses see this becomes very peculiar and uh, very characteristic feature of the poaceae see underground rhizome which means the whatever the roots are there below the ground these are also called as the underground rhizome and this rhizome can create the new plant from time to time that is uh, whatever the root system is there below the ground along with the root system there is a stem which is present inside the ground okay and these uh, stems which remain inside the ground even after the plant death occurs when the favorable condition come these rhizomes will come out from the ground and it will create the new plant okay so underground rhizome in all the perennial grass grasses is the characteristic feature of the poaceae family that is when the unfavorable condition is there the whatever the above portion is there for the plant this above portion uh, will get die okay over a period of time but whatever the rhizome is there which is present below the ground this will remain dormant and till there is a appearance of the favorable condition and once there is a favorable condition these rhizomes will come out from the ground and it will create a new plant okay then the stems are cylindrical okay cylindrical stems are there then they are culm in nature that is hollow in nature as you know you must have seen the uh, bamboo plant and in the bamboo you, you will definitely observe the stem which is hollow okay and then they are having the very conspicuous node okay easily recognizable nodes are there you see here this is the first node okay this is the second node and this is the third node okay so nodes are very conspicuous you can easily observe the nodes okay and then there are the inter nodes okay whatever the portion is between the two nodes this a portion is called as the inter nodes okay these are called as the inter nodes so nodes and the inter nodes are very prominent in the family of the poaceae as it's a grass family and has the bamboo as their member these are bamboo plants or the uh whatever the sugarcane plants are there they were prominently showing the nodes and the inter nodes okay see the inter nodes are hollow okay whatever the portion are there here these inter nodes are very hollow and they were herbaceous or the woody okay this may be the herbaceous uh, uh, in nature this stem or this stem may be woody in nature okay it will depend on which type of the plants we are talking about then the plants are glabrous in nature okay smooth stems are shown by these plants and hence the glabrous nature is there then the vegetative shoots are arising from the base of the aerial stem see whatever you see observe in this particular picture whatever the aerial stem is there this is the aerial stem and from the base of this aerial stem the 
new uh, branches or vegetative shoots are arising uh, from the underground stem. These are called as the tillers. Okay, observe here. These are called as daughter plants for the tillers. And uh, whatever the rhizome is there is underground, from this underground rhizome, if the new branches are created, these new branches are called as the daughter plants. Okay, daughter plants or say tillers. Okay, so uh, uh, whatever the underground rhizome are there, whenever they create the new plant, these uh, new plants are called as the or the new branches is called as the tillers. Okay, so, so the very important term regarding the poaceae family that is the tillers because examiner will definitely look forward for the distinguishing points okay so in the poaceae family you should remember the steel root right steel roots are there very unique then the tillers are there which are also very unique okay and the underground rhizome is also very unique to the uh, poaceae family now consider the leaves how the leaves are there see leaves are alternate okay that is on the stem they were uh, coming alternate to the one another okay like that alternate uh, phyllotaxy is there for this particular leaves okay then the leaves are simple okay that is the one uh, leaf uh, blade is there uh, one leaf lamina is there and this kind of leaf is considered as a simple leaf then it is dioecious and extipulate in nature okay that is no stipules are present they are sessile observe here in this particular picture how the sessile leaves are there that is no petiole okay if the petiole is present we say the petiolate leaf but if the no petiolate is present then we say the sessile leaf so this kind of leaf is called as the sessile leaf then and the leaves is legulate in nature okay they, uh, and it is absent in the echinocolia okay echinocolia is a plant which belongs to the poaceae and there is a uh, absence of the leaves okay actually the due to the uh, water trace or to uh, reduce the transpiration okay see the leaves base are forming the tubular sheath observe here see if you uh, see the base of the leaves you will definitely see the leaf base is a broad base okay and it is forming the tubular sheath you cannot actually take out the single leaf easily from this plant okay if you try to take out these leaves due to their sheathing leaf base these leaf base are uh, compactly taking this leaf uh, around the internode and that is why uh, it is not easy to take out this single leaf okay as in case of the other dicotyledonous plant we can easily take out the single leaf but in case of these uh, particular poesy members they were forming the uh, very tubular sheath at the base okay and this tubular sheath is actually surrounding the whole of the internode Internode. Okay, actually, uh, part, uh, say 70 to 75 percent of the internode is covered by these uh, particular sheathing leaf bases, and rest of the 25 percent remains open. Okay, that is incompletely they are surrounding the internode. Okay, so sheaths are open and they were surrounding the internode incompletely. Almost uh, all of the internode is surrounded by them actually, but some portion left, and hence we say the internode are uh, incompletely covered up by the sheathing base. Okay, see, legules are present at the junction of the lamina and the sheath. Okay. Okay. whatever the lamina are there this is the lamina and at the sheath okay at the junction of it you will definitely find the presence of the legule again this is a legule is a very special structure which we are seeing first time uh, in the poaceae family okay in the dicotyledonous plants we have not seen the legule okay before so the leaves are entire then they are hairy okay hairs are present on the leaves or sometimes rug in nature they are linear and they were showing the parallel venation again the very characteristic feature of the monocotyledonous plant because in the dicotyledonous plant whenever we say the, about the venation it is the reticulate type of the venation okay always unicostate or the multicostate reticulate type of venation is there in the plant families in the dicotyledonous plant families but the parallel type of the venation is there in the poesy family because as you know the parallel type of the venation is the characteristic feature of the monocotyledonous plants okay so uh, whenever you see the leaf the leaves are going like this okay like this are uh, the veins are going so they are running parallel to the one another like this okay hence the parallel venation is there but on the other hand in the dicotyledonous leaf the, there is a single uh, unicosta then there is a lateral branch uh, branching of the uh, uh, say ven and venlets okay so this is how the reticulate venation is there in the dicots but in the monocots you will find the parallel type of the venation so the leaves were showing the parallel venation as it's a characteristic feature of the monocotyledonous plant families okay now let us consider the uh, inflorescence okay how the inflorescence is there in the floral characteristics see the compound spike is there okay which may be sessile or the stark okay see uh, compound spike type of the inflorescence is there in and all the many flowers 
profits are coming out from this compound spike and they may have the stock or they may be sessile okay sometimes the stock is present but sometimes the stock is uh, missing it will depend on the species okay see each uh, unit of the inflorescence is a spike led if you take out the one individual uh, unit of the inflorescence this individual unit of the inflorescence is called as the spike led okay again the very uh, unique term which is coming regarding the monocotyledonous family or the poaceae family okay so the spikelets the spikelets are uh, individual members of the inflorescence then these spikelets are uh, arranged in the various ways on the main axis called as the rachilla okay see this is the main axis rachilla and on this rachilla these uh, particular uh, spikelets are arranged like this okay so uh, in the center we have the rachilla okay this is called as the rachilla and uh, this is called as the individual spikelet okay so individual spikelets and the rachillas are there these individual spikelets and the rachilla are uh, together constituting the one single inflorescence okay so inflorescence is a compound spike type of the inflorescence is there individual member of this compound spike type of the inflorescence is called as the spikelets okay and these are spikelets are arranged on the x main axis that main axis is called as the rachilla okay again the new words are coming in regard to the monocot family so here you can judge that how the examiner will quickly judge okay you over a period over a description of the plant family for example majority of the student what they do they are they are so obsessed with the dicotyledonous plant that they tends to uh, describe the dicotyledonous flower in the monocotyledonous plant family and if the examiner do not find the words like spikelets or the rachilla in the monocotyledonous plant family he will definitely know that you don't know uh, much uh, deeper knowledge uh, regarding the uh, plant families of the angiosperm and he, this will definitely cost you the marks okay majority of the time after the mains student tells us that they may have uh, accurately written down all the mains but they still uh, didn't get the marks this is because the main content okay got uh, distorted and due to the distortion of the main content the marks got reduced okay so here you should carefully remember which plant families are the monocotyledonous plant families and which plant families are the dicotyledonous plant families okay so that uh, you will definitely know where to use which type of the words okay so here the compound spike type of the inflorescence is there which is arranged on the rachilla and the individual members are called as the spikelets okay see the compound inflorescence may be spike of the spikelets in case of the triticum as you know triticum uh, astavum it is the wheat okay triticum astavum the astavum this particular plant is called as the wheat plant okay and that is the gehu and this particular wheat plant or the gehu plant belongs to the poaceae family then the panicle of the spikelets is observed in the avena plant okay this is the avena plant okay oat plant so the triticum astavum and the oat plants are belongs to the poaceae family and they were showing the compound spike type of the inflorescence but in the triticum you will observe the spike of the spikelets and in the avena you will observe the panicle of the spikelets okay now see now see the spikelets whatever the spikelets are there they are consist of the short axis which is called the rachilla right on which the one to many sessile short stalk flowers are born okay now see whatever the rachilla is there and on this rachilla the for example the spikelet is there right and in this spikelet so one to many flowers are there okay one to many sessile flowers are there or short stalk flowers are there they may be sessile or they may be stalk uh, short uh, having the short stalk okay so the arrangement is like this there is a main rachis okay on this rachis uh, you will find the presence of the spikelet okay like this so these are spikelets are not having the one plant one uh, flower but the many flowers okay one to many flowers are present and this uh, individual called as the spikelet and along with the rachilla it is called as the compound spike okay it is the whole inflorescence but whatever the individual flowers are there they were born in a group okay see the florets may be arranged in a alternate or in a opposite manner that is whatever the flowers are arranged they may be arranged like this that is opposite to the one another okay or they may be the alternate to the one another like this okay so it will depend on a species whether there is a opposite uh, um, uh, arrangement of the flowers or the alternate opposite uh, arrangement of the flowers okay on the central axis okay so uh, the spikelets whatever the spikelets are there these are spikelets are forming the very unique kind of the uh, flower condition in the uh, poaceae family 
okay so you should carefully remember the rachela part okay the rachela the main axis then uh, from the rain and main axis whatever is coming it's called a spikelet and these are spikelet having uh, one to many flowers and these are flowers may be arranged in alternate or in the opposite fashion okay so such a there are many uh, spikelets on these uh, particular one rachis and together this will constitute the whole of the inflorescence okay compound uh, spike type of the inflorescence is there okay see at the base of the rachela okay whatever the rachela is there at the base of the rachela the two sterile scales are there okay at the base of the rachela okay see uh, this is the rachela okay and at the base of the rachela there were the two sterile scales okay and these sterile scales are called as the gliums what it calls it's called gliums okay see this is the rachela and at the base of the rachela okay see at the base here rachela you will find the two sterile scales okay and see they are not fertile they are sterile in nature okay carefully choose the word to write down in the upsc mains okay if you get, if you uh, turn the word sterile from to the fertile it will cost you the marks again okay so two sterile scales are there okay so these are two sterile scales are the uh, one is called as the see here you can observe the uh, first bloom okay this is the first bloom okay and this is the uh second gloom okay so the glooms are placed one above the other on the opposite side see on the opposite side they are present and they were present one above the other okay the lower one is called as the first gloom okay see this is the lower gloom and it is called as the first gloom okay and then there is a upper gloom which is called as the second gloom okay so first gloom and the second gloom both these sterile glooms are present at the base of the uh rachela okay at the base of the rachela you will definitely find the two sterile uh, scales these are sterile scales are called as the gliums okay and these uh, gliums are called uh, the lower gloom is called as the first gloom while the upper gloom is called as the second gloom okay see both the glooms are the boat shape okay observe here the boat uh, shape is there right so boat shaped uh, shape glooms are there in the at the base of the rachela okay now see above the glooms a series of the florets are present above these glooms okay uh, whatever the florets are there these are florets are present above the gloom okay each of floret has the inferior pilia okay or the lemma okay these are called as the pilia okay see inferior pilia or these are pilia are also called as the lemma okay now see here the upper fertile lemma is given okay so uh, above the superior pili pili which is called as the lemma all right so the lemma is frequently bear the long strip hair Uh, called as the on okay the long uh, stiff hairs are there these long stiff hairs are called as the on okay so this type of the very unique structures are there in this particular poaceae family inflorescence okay because in the inflorescence basically what you have is you have the rachela okay on the rachela what will born there will be the spikelets okay so in the spikelet you will have one to many flowers and these are uh, flowers may be arranged in alternate or opposite fashion now at the base of the rachela you will have the upper gloom and the lower gloom the lower gloom is called as the first gloom and the upper gloom is called as the second gloom okay and above the gloom you will have the pilia okay so uh, the fertile and the sterile pilia are also there in this particular flower okay now see how the flowers are there see the flowers are bracted that is the bracts are present and they were the bracteolate then the flowers are uh, sessile that is they do not have any uh, receptacle okay or say they do not have any stalk okay they are incomplete that is uh, they may maybe the male flowers or they may be the female flower that is either the androecium is absent or the gynoecium is absent or the calyx corolla one of the four whorls is absent then we say the flower is incomplete but and they are hermaphrodite okay that is they were bisexual that is the presence of androecium and the gynoecium on the same flower. flower is there but sometimes the unisexual flowers are also there for example in the zia means in the zia means you will find the male flowers are there then there are the female flowers okay so male flower and female flower both are present in the uh, zia means okay that is the unisexual condition is there then the flowers are irregular okay they do not have any definite shape and they were zygomorphic in nature see very very important and it's a advanced type of the characteristic in the poaceae family that is they were showing the zygomorphic type of the condition so zygomorphic that literally means if you cut the flower you can cut into two equal parts from the one plane only okay there is no second plane but in the zygomorphic uh, but in the ectomorphic flower you can cut the flower from the any plane right so the flower is basically the zygomorphic flower it is hypogynous flower and it is cyclic in nature okay so the bisexual condition unisexual condition both conditions are there flowers may be incomplete okay they are sessile right and they were bracteate okay see the how the perianth is there see whenever we say the calyx and the corolla 
Okay, observe this carefully. The individual member of the calyx is called as the sepals. Okay, and the individual member of the corolla is called as the petals. Okay, see the, if the petals and the sepals are not separable. Okay, and they were forming the one structure, uh, or they looks very alike. Then we say the such a structure combinedly creating the perianth. Okay, see the perianth is there. See the, it is represented by the membrane scales called as the lodicules. Okay, see uh, whatever the individual members of the perianth are there. These individual members of the perianth are called as the lodicules. Okay. Okay, observe in this particular picture, you will definitely observe some of the characteristics of the monocotyledonous flower. See here, you will definitely observe the lodicule. See, this is the first, second lodicule is there. Okay, so the perianth, the individual member of the perianth is called as the lodicules. Okay, see the lodicules are uh, situated above and opposite to the superior pilia. As you, uh, as we have discussed pilia in the previous slide, and above to this pilia, there is a presence of the lodicules. Okay, and sometimes they may be absent or many in case of the. Uh, uh, or can dry or maybe two or three okay so number of the lodicules it uh, may be many that is indefinite sign can be put okay two or the three uh, can be put during the floral formula that is in the floral formula if the calyx and corolla is absent then we represent Perianth, and we can say the two perianths are there, right? We can say the three perianths are there. We can say the indefinite perianths are there. But generally, P2 condition is there. That is the uh, two lodicules are there, okay? So the individual members of the perianth is called as the lodicles. Okay, they were just present opposite to the superior pili, and they may be sometimes absent. They may be sometimes many, or sometimes two to three in number. Okay, now see. See how the androsium is there, okay? See, androsium usually stamens are three. That is the A3 condition is there, okay? And rarely six in case of the Oryza sativa. Now, Oryza sativa is the rice, okay? See, very, very important crops. For example, the wheat and the rice and the oats, okay? All these uh, important uh, agricultural crops belong to this particular Poyasi family. Okay, so usually there are uh, three stamens, but rarely six stamens can also be seen. Okay, so A3 condition is there, and rarely six condition is A6 condition is also there. And in a one uh, and one in a various species in case of the uh, androstis. Okay, in androstis, you will find the A1 condition. Okay, so number of androsiums or the number of stamens vary from species to species, but generally the A3 condition is there. Okay, then uh, they are polyandrous. Okay, that is they are free from one another, so no requirement of the bracket. Okay, A3 condition simply is there, and they were. Uh, not fused with one another okay observe here how the stamens are there they are very free from one another okay see a6 condition is there in this particular plant and this particular a6 condition is showing the uh, polyandrous type of the situation that is in which the stamens are not fused with one another but they are free from one another okay then the filaments are long observe the filaments see how the filaments are very very long filaments are very long in the poesi family and the anthers were diathecus okay see diathecus anthers are there this is the first portion and this is the second portion then they are versatile in nature then they are linear extors facing towards uh, opposite side from the one another and the pollen grains are very dry okay so that they can easily be transferred by the wind okay so how the androsium is there the a3 condition or the a6 condition or the a1 condition is there right polyandrous in nature that is they are not fused and uh, the filaments are very long okay then the anthers are diathecus in nature they are versatile uh, linear extors pollen grains are very dry in nature then let us see how the gynosium is there see the carpels the monocarpillary condition is there that is the g1 that is only the one carpel is there and as you know the reduction in the number of carpels is considered as an advanced character, right? In the angiospermic plant families. So G1 condition is there, and this is this is this uh, condition can uh, tell you that how the Poesi family is the advanced family because the number of carpels is reduced to only one. Okay. Now see, according to the some authors, the carpels are three, right? That is the G3 condition is also there, of which the two are absorptive. Okay. That is the uh, initially the three carpels were there, but two carpels over a period of time got used up, got abort. Okay. Then the ovary is superior okay uh, so g1 below dash okay unilocular with the single ovule okay so only one locule is there and only the one ovule is there then the basal type of placentation is there in the ovule arrangement okay see the style is short or very absent and the stigma uh, the stigmas are too feathery papillate and the branch okay so feathery type of the stigma is there in this particular poesy members why is uh, feathery type of the stigma is there see stigma is like that okay they were forming the feather like structures okay and why this feather like structure is important because uh, understand this see we have talked about the anthers and these anthers were having the very dry pollen grains okay so that they can be transferred through the winds okay now imagine these are pollen grains are uh, 
blowing through the winds and uh, they should be landed on this particular stigma so here the stigma is feathery okay so feathery that literally means they were having the larger surface area and once these uh, pollen grains come in contact with this feathery stigma they can easily catch it okay to catch these uh, stigmas very easily hence the feathery stigma is there in the uh, family members of the poaceae okay how gynosheme is there see the gynosheme is monocarpellary in nature only the g1 condition is there and some authors suggest there were the three uh, carpels but two get about over a period of time ovary is superior only one locule is there single ovule is present right and basal placentation is there okay so stigma as uh, are feathery right papillate and they were branch okay branch stigma is there because they uh, such a type of stigma is required to catch the whatever the pollen grains are coming uh, from the air okay that is the anemophilus type of the pollination is there in these uh, particular plants okay because uh, as you know uh, whenever you talk about the dicotyledonous plant family we have talked about the anemophilus type of the pollination majority of the time okay but the members of the monocotyledonous plant family that is the poaceae family shows the anemophilus type of the pollination okay because they are wind pollinated plant not only the insects uh, but also the wind is used by these plants to get pollinated and hence they were showing the dry pollen grains and the very feathery feathery or the papillae type of the uh, stigma okay so that they can easily capture the pollen grains which are coming from the air right now see the fruit okay how the fruit is there see caryopsis type of the fruit is there okay see the acne with the pericar completely united with the seed coat okay because this type of the fruits are present in the wheat okay then in the rice okay which is called as the caryopsis type of the fruit okay or rarely the nut okay in case of the dendrocalamus okay see the nut type of the fruit is there in this particular dendrocalamus or the berry type in case of the bambusa okay bambusa we are showing the berry type of the uh, fruit okay so caryopsis is the main uh, type of the fruit which found in the poaceae family so be careful while writing down regarding the fruit in the poaceae family in the mains exam that you should mention carefully the first word that is the caryopsis then we have the exceptions in uh, in case uh, we have the nut and the berry okay then the seed okay how the seed is there the endospermic seed is there and it is containing the only single cotyledon okay generally in the seed of the dicot plant you will uh, find the two cotyledons are there but in the seed of the monocotyledons you will definitely find only the single cotyledon and this single cotyledon is called as this scutellum okay what it is called it is called as the scutellum okay this portion is called as the scutellum so uh, the single cotyledon is there in the seed and this single cotyledon is called scutellum okay which is the shield shape okay observe how the shield shape is there right and it is placed against the endosperm okay against the endosperm it is placed inside the seed okay so how the seeds are there the endospermic seeds are there they were having the only single cotyledon of course because the family belongs to the monocotyledons okay that is mono means one okay cotyledons means cotyledon that is the plants which has the only one cotyledon and that one cotyledon is called as the scutellum okay it is shield shape and it is placed against the endosperm okay now let us discuss the floral formula for the poaceae family okay of course the flowers are zygomorphic hence this particular sign is required flowers are majority of the time bisexual okay that is why this sign is required sometimes unisexual flowers are also there and perianth okay perianth may be zero okay absent or two okay this condition is there that is the two lodicules may be present there okay then androsium how many either three or six and they were polyandrous so no fusion is there and then the gynosium is monocarpillary and superior ovary is there hence the underlying sign is there okay so this is how the floral formula is there for the poaceae family that is they were showing the actinoma the zygomorphic flower okay bisexual flower perianth either absent or two uh, lodicules are there androsiums three or six in number gynosium one and the superior ovary is there okay now let us consider the floral diagram for the poaceae family now see this is the floral diagram observe the very unique kind of floral diagram is there now what you are seeing in the floral diagram this is the first structure and this is the second structure both of these are the lodicules okay the two lodicules are given okay this is the first lodicule and this is the second lodicule okay after the lodicule what we have the androsium either three or six okay so here three uh, uh, androsiums are shown okay after that the gynosium one okay only the one gynosium is shown inside here like this okay so uh, whatever the lodicules are there they were showing in a two number okay then we have the uh, androsium either three or six so here three condition is shown and the gynosium is only one so very different kind of the floral diagram is there for the poaceae family because uh, these are the monocotyledonous family and the monocot flower is quite different from the dicot flower okay now see 
Let us consider the primitive character. Which primitive character are shown by the Poaceae family? See, for a few plants are arboreal in habit. That is the tree habit she is shown by the some plant. It, it is considered as a primitive character. See, all the florets in the spikelets are fertile. Okay, and whatever the fertileness is there in the florets, so that the many flowers are present and many flowers are. Fertile, so this is considered. This is also considered as a primitive condition. Then the glooms are persistent. Okay, whatever the glooms are there, these glooms remain on the uh, fruit. Yeah, uh, that is till the formation of fruits, you will find the presence of the glooms. Okay, so this condition is also considered as a primitive condition. Then the lemas are herbaceous and leafy. Okay, so whatever the lemas are there, they are herbaceous and leafy in nature, and it is considered as a primitive character. Then the stigmas are three. Okay, so some species were having the three stigma, although there is a monocarpillary condition. But some species were showing the three stigma. That is, the more stigmas are present. Okay, and the leaves are uh, simple and the alternate. Again, the primitive condition. Flower are hypogynous and the hermaphrodite. That is, bisexual flowers and are hypogynous in nature. This condition is also the primitive condition. Then the seeds are endospermic. This endospermic condition is also considered as a primitive type of the condition. Then let us consider the uh, advanced character. Okay, now see the advanced character. See mostly herbaceous. Yes, all the herbs are the uh, considered as a advanced uh, advanced character. Okay, annuals or the perennial herbs are there. See leaves are extipulate. No stipules are present. So the advanced condition is there. Flowers are arranged in a distinct inflorescence. Okay, so very unique kind of inflorescence is there for this particular flowers. And these are particular flowers we are having the very distinct inflorescence, which is the very characteristic feature of this Poaceae family, which is making them the advanced family. Okay, see the flowers are very small. As you know, the small flowers are considered as advanced flower, while the large flowers are considered as a primitive flower. Their flowers are inconspicuous; you cannot easily recognize the flower. Okay, if you take the individual flower, you can barely see it. Okay, and very small flowers are there, inconspicuous flowers are there, and they were zygomorphic in nature. That is, they were having the uh, whatever the symmetry is there of the flower, it is zygomorphic. Uh, and as you know, zygomorphic condition is considered as advanced condition over the. Actinomorphic condition. Then the perianth is represented by the lodicules. Okay, this is also the new structure and it represents the advanced character. Then stamens are only reduced to the three. Okay, as you know, reduction in the stamens or the carpels is considered as the advanced character. And here the gy gynosium is reduced to the one only and the unilocular condition is there. Okay, so the basal placentation is there. It is also the advanced condition. That the fruit is caryopsis. This is the advanced type of fruit. And the seeds are small size. This is also considered as the advanced character. So all these characters are uh, making this particular poaceae family. as the advanced family okay now let us finally consider what is the economic importance for the poaceae family see there is a large economic importance for this family because whole of our agriculture is actually dependent upon these uh, members of the poaceae family right see the family stands first and the foremost in the economic importance in the whole of the angiosperms okay because uh, you it is not comparable with the rest of the plant families in terms of the economic importance because whole of the human society is actually having the staple food in the form of poaceae members these are poaceae members are uh, providing food material throughout the whole population of the world and hence they are they stands very first and the foremost when they were compared with the other uh, angiospermic plant families for their economic importance okay see the staple food grains okay of the population of the world is derived from the oryza sativa which is called as the rice and the tritica mastema which is called as the wheat okay and they were cultivated from time immemorial okay we don't know exact date but from that time uh, we are uh, cultivating this particular or plants in our agricultural fields and we are using the nutrition out of these plants and hence uh, these are particular uh, plants which belongs to the poaceae family are responsible for providing the food throughout the population of the world okay whatever the population of the world is there this population is actually fed uh, fed up by these particular members of the poaceae family so from this point you can judge how the economically important this particular poaceae family is for the humans okay now see the foods see the tritica mastema uh, aster of course the gehu okay wheat is there then the oryza sativa yes rice right the zia maize that is the maize right corn then the hordium vulgare which is called as the jaw okay then the sorga vulgare which is called as the jawar okay avena sativa which is called as the oats then the uh, peniceta metaphrodes which is called as the bajra all these are cultivated cereals and the food grains okay so from this list you can imagine how humans are heavily dependent on the members of the poaceae family for their food and nutrition okay so you should carefully remember while you are describing the poaceae family and you are giving its economic importance the first thing you should give, come to your mind is their agricultural importance along with the botanical names then and only then the examiner will give you the complete marks regarding that particular answer okay so the very critical importance is there in the form of 
food in the Poesi family. Okay. Now, some of the members are also used as a fodder. Okay. That is whatever the <coughs> pets animals we have. For these pets animal, we use the members of the Poesi family. Uh, the members of this Poesi family we use as a fodder for our uh, animals. Okay. Whatever the agricultural animals are there. For these agricultural animals, we use the Fodder, which is coming from the Poesi family. See the cyanodon grass. This is the very common cyanodon grass. As you know, the many animals feed on this cyanodon grass. Then uh, cyanodon dictylon grass is this. And then the panicum. Okay, this is the panicum grass. Then we have the symbopogon. This is the symbopogon grass. Then agrostis. This is agrostis grass. And this is the poa. Okay, this is the poa grass. This is the poa grass, okay, and um, these uh, these all these grasses were used as a fodder, okay, naturally or artificially. These grasses were typically the food for the many animals which we use in our agricultural fields, okay. Then the sugar, okay, of course the very famous member, the Saccharum officinarum, which is called as the sugar cane, okay. This sugar cane, that is the Saccharum officinarum, is largely responsible for the production of the gur or the sugar, okay, throughout the world. Actually, the member Saccharum officinarum is responsible for providing the uh, 60 to 90 percent of the sugar throughout the world okay so the very important another member of the poesi family is the saccharum officinarum that is the sugar cane okay then see the building material for the building material we use some of the species for example the bambusa see this is the bamboo and as you know for example, the bambusa tubula, this particular species is used to create the bamboo houses, okay? As you know, they were used in the scaffolding and the snatching huts, right? Huts were the small houses which are created out of the bamboos, okay? So, bamboos are also used as a building material. And these particular bamboos belong to this Poyasi plant family, okay? So, food are importance is there, okay? Then the sugar importance is there and then the uh, building material importance is also there. Then see for the furniture, okay? See the species of the dendrocalamus. See, this is the dendrocalamus. Then the arundariana. See, this is the arundere dinaria. Are used in the manufacture of the furnitures, okay? Furnitures were created out of this material which is coming from these plant species, okay? Then the aromatic grasses, okay? See, the aromatic grasses are very, very important because they produce the essential oil. Okay, what they were producing, they were producing the essential oil. And these essential oil were greatly responsible for the production of the perfumes. Okay, as you know, you have the topic in the UPSC means that the perfume producing plants or the perfume yielding plants are there. Okay, so in the perfume yielding plants, you can mention these examples as well. Okay, see the many grasses yield the scented oils, okay, which are used in the perfumery. For example, the vetiveria, uh, zinzanoidus, it yields the vetiver oil from its root. Okay, this is the grass which is called is the vetiveria and this vetiveria grass is producing the very scented oil okay perfumery oil and this uh, perfumery oil is famously called as the vetiver oil okay and this vetiver oil it's coming from its roots okay see the roots are also woven into the curtains okay it is useful in the curtains as well then the antropogon adoratus this particular grass is called as the ginger grass okay this is the ginger grass and then we have the second one which is called as the uh, uh, sambopogon satratus which is also called as the lemon grass then we have the Cambopogon martini, which is called as the Germanian grass. Uh, it is they, all these grasses were essentially responsible for, for production of the essential oil, which is very scented, and hence they were used in the perfumery. Okay, so all these are the perfume producing plants. Aromatic grasses are there. They were uh, producing the uh, scented oils, and these are scented oils were uh, useful in the uh, very useful from the human point of view. Okay, and all these members are belongs to this particular Poesi family. Then see the medicinal importance of this particular Poesi family. See the Fragment is Karka, okay. This is the Karka species. Then the Sambopogon uh, Shuminananthus, uh, this is the particular second species, are medicinal in nature, okay. And uh, sessile cereals are cultivated for the infection of the infl of the inflorescence by the Claviceps purpurea, okay. We have talked about this in our fungi lecture that these uh, Claviceps purpurea fungi will grow on the cereals inflorescence and uh, the ergot, this particular alkaloid is uh, this particular ergot fungi is actually responsible for the production of the ergotine okay this ergotine is an excellent remedy for the uterine contraction okay so that is why to obtain the ergotine the uh, this particular ergot should grow on the cereals and the um, cereals which are coming from the poesi family uh, are uh, taken to grow the claviceps purpurea so that there will be the ergot infection and from this ergot infection there will be the extraction of the ergotine and as you know what is the importance of this ergotine yeah the in the uterine in contraction the uh, this particular chemical find its application okay so this is how the poesy members are of medicinal use also okay now see 
द पेपर इंडस्ट्री ओके सी इट इज मैन्युफैक्चर्ड फ्रॉम द सर्टन स्पीसीज ऑफ द ग्रासेस एंड द बांबूज ओके सम स्पीसीज ऑफ द ग्रासेस एंड सम स्पीसीज ऑफ द बांबू आर यूजफुल इन द पेपर इंडस्ट्री इन द क्रिएशन ऑफ द पेपर्स ओके नाउ द ऑफकोर्स द ऑर्नामेंटल इंपॉर्टेंस इज आल्सो देयर ओके ऑब्जर्व दिस पर्टिकुलर फर्स्ट एंड द सेकंड प्लांट्स हाउ ब्यूटीफुल दे लुक ओके एंड ड्यू टू देयर ब्यूटी दीज आर लार्जली यूजफुल इन द ऑर्नामेंटल गार्डन्स ओके इन द इन द हाउस होल्ड्स इन द गार्डन्स दे वेर यूज्ड एज ऑर्नामेंटल्स ओके सी द नेम ऑफ द स्पीसीज सी द रेंचे लेट्रियम रेपन्स एंड द क्वार्टेड एरिया सिलोना ओके दिस इज द क्वार्टेड एरिया सिलोना एंड दिस इज द रेपन्स स्पीसीज ओके एंड सम स्पीसीज ऑफ द ट्राइब बेम्बूसोइडी आर ऑर्नामेंटल्स ओके बांबूज आर ऑल्सो लुक्स वेरी गुड एंड हेन्स ऑल दीज मेंबर्स आर यूजफुल इन द ऑर्नामेंटल पर्पज ओके बिसाइड देयर नंबर ऑफ ग्रासेस आर ऑल्सो ground to form the fine lawns right playgrounds right as you know uh, in the many uh, uh, hotels you will uh, or in the houses you will definitely find there is a lawns okay and these are lawns were created out of the poesi family members and uh, the playgrounds okay what if for example the cricket playground or the football playgrounds having the very small grasses these are small grasses were also belongs to the poesi family okay so this is the very unique kind of the economic importance is there for this particular poesi family because this is the monocotyledonous family and we have studied the different kinds of the structures different kinds of the inflorescence the, the very different kind of the economic importance and the different kind of floral formula and the floral diagram for this particular poesi family okay so here so this is all about this topic okay thank you very much for watching this video please like this video share this video with your friends who are studying the botany and if you haven't subscribed to the botany after channel yet please subscribe to the botany after channel for upsc examination again thank you very much for giving your time see you in the next video lecture thank you